Hey, I'm Shiley and you're watching 8 Brave Books. Da, 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 da. Hi everyone, I hope that you're all doing super well today. I'm so excited because I'm coming at you with one of my favorite videos to watch in the entire year. I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. And that's a video talking about all the books that I read in 2021. <laughs> I am going to go in order of what I read this year, so starting with what I read in January through December. Uh, if you watched my previous video, you will know that I'm in the middle of several books, some of which I didn't even mention in that video. Um, and those that I haven't fully completed this year, I will not be counting as fully read. When and if I finish reading them, I will mark them as read, and I'm guessing that'll be in 2022. Also, I want to say that I am not going to be bashing any books in this video. I will not be talking about books I didn't like or things that I didn't like in books. If that's something you're interested in watching, there are plenty of other channels out there that do that. On this channel, I really try to promote positivity, so for every book that I discuss, I will be sharing a couple of things that I really enjoyed in the stories, whether in my head I would have given them three stars versus five stars, doesn't matter to me. There's something to love in every book. In this video, I'm going to be discussing middle grade, young adult, and new adult novels. So there's something in here for everyone, I hope. And let's get started. So the first book that I read and completed this year was Holes by Louis Sacker, or Sahar. I'm not sure how he pronounces it. This book, this book was very popular when I was in middle school, actually in elementary school. And I had the pleasure of getting to teach it to some elementary school kids this year, and they really loved it, which was so enjoyable to just watch. And I love discussing the story with them. This story is basically about a boy named Stanley who is accused of stealing the shoes of a famous basketball player from some auction. And he gets sent away to this camp for bad boys, which is basically a labor camp, very intense, very, very awful. And he sort of makes friends like enemies there you know everybody's just trying to do what they can and then get out when their sentence is over basically what he and these guys have to do every day is dig holes in the ground and then you know obviously things get revealed as the story goes along I really felt for this main character I just wanted to give him a hug and I really did enjoy the story so that is the first book that I finished this year the next book that I read and completed this year was Serious Moonlight by Jen Bennett. This was my second Jen Bennett book. I read Alex approximately a couple of years back when it blew up. And man, I wish her other books would blow up too. She's so good. <laughs> I really like especially that her protagonists are really smart and really sophisticated. And yes, they do things that any teenager would do. Reading this and being 24, like I felt like the protagonist was my age in some sort of way. This is about a girl who is that I think either works at a diner or was kind of raised in a diner and she runs into this guy that she's had only one previous interaction with and it was really awkward it ended really badly and then the two of them turns out that they're working at the same hotel and she wants to avoid him at all costs and he's not gonna let that happen um this book was seriously so sweet so romantic and I really loved the descriptions of the characters I really felt like they were all very unique from each other I loved her I think her aunt or her mom's best friend raises her i'm not sure but i love getting to read all of the exquisite costumes that she has also another thing that i really loved in this story is <laughs> it's so sweet whenever the guy is trying to show the girl that he likes her he takes her hand and puts it on his heart so she can like feel his heartbeat which i thought was like one of the cutest things in the world jen bennett you rock and this is my favorite book by you so far. The third book that I read and completed this year is actually another middle grade and that's The Losers Club by Andrew Clements. You may know him as the author of Frindle. I feel like that was one of his most popular books at least when I was a kid. This is another book that I read with my elementary schoolers and this is about a boy who has to stay after school because his parents work extra um, and all he wants to do is read but the school is trying to force him to join a club so he actually starts his own club called The Losers Club and he thinks that by calling it that no one's gonna want to join. Like who's gonna want to join a club called Losers Club? Well it turns out a ton of other kids are losers aka winners like him and love to read and so it turns into this whole big phenomenon it, I love this it was so much fun to read it was incredible the kids that I work with like really really enjoyed it too um there was a little bit of romance in it even they're in sixth grade he would get all blushy when he would talk to this girl he liked there was also um talk about bullying in this story and being proud of who you are definitely really enjoy this one if you're looking for a fun middle grade with a really great message I would definitely check this one out the next book that I read and completed in 2021 is Of Curses and Kisses by Sonia Menon. You may know her as the author of When, Dub when Dimple Met Rishi and Other Stories. Um, this was different from her other books though because it has some magical realism in it. It's a loose fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast, which is one of my all-time favorite stories, like seriously, seriously. And this one is about this girl who is, I believe, the princess of India and her younger sister gets into a scandal and because the older one wants to protect her, she's like, you know what, let's go to Colorado and finish out school at this like bougie boarding school. Well, little does her little sister know 
first of all, this school is full of like rich people, kids of nepotism, things like that. But little does her younger sister know that the older one is trying to ruin the life of a guy that she thinks was trying to ruin her younger sister's life. So she thinks that this guy was somehow involved in the scandal because their families are feuding and she wants to take him down by making him fall in love with her and then breaking his heart. Um, and it's really cool because this story is actually told in both perspectives, which I really like. So she's supposed to be like the beauty character and he's supposed to be like the beast character. Obviously things are not black and white, obviously very gray. I really enjoyed the little bit of touch of magic in this story and I love this cover. And the companion novel of Princes and Promises recently came out and it's actually from the point of view of the girl Girl in this story who's like kind of the mean girl um so i'm really excited to read from her point of view but yes really really enjoy this one like really enjoy this one okay the next book i read and completed is fat chance charlie vega by cristel maldonado and this book is her debut novel which is incredible because it's so good and so well written this book is so sweet like literally sugar sweet off the bat, just loved it. The protagonist wants to be an author. I love stories about protagonists that want to be authors. They are some of my favorites to read about. Very relatable. The fat representation was incredible. She has such a complicated relationship with her mother. You know, it's it those kind of situations where mm, maybe her mom wants the best for her, but she doesn't do it in a healthy way. Almost promotes disordered eating by trying to make her drink these like weird shakes every day like she does. So she wants to be left alone because she loves who she is, she loves how she looks, and it really hurts her relationship with her mom. Um, she also has a best friend and reading about their relationship was interesting and like getting to read how they didn't always get along. Uh, and then of course the love story. Oh my gosh, so sugar sweet romantic, like just loved it so much. I loved how much they connected with each other. I believe that he is fat too, so there is representation on both sides. Um, so much fun to read. Like I was just like this the whole time, like hmm. the next one. You have heard me talk about this on this channel. If you watch my, any of my previous videos, I most likely mention this. I love this. This was recommended to me by my friend Kayla. Kayla reads books on Instagram. She's fantastic and you should check her out. Anyway, it's A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey. Also a debut, incredible, mind-blowing, so terrific. This is about a girl who is Cuban and lives in Miami. And after a couple of really awful things happened to her, her parents sent her to London to live with some of her family that she doesn't I don't think has ever met or doesn't know well. They own a bed and breakfast and she wants to be a baker. So she kind of worms her way into getting a gig at the bed and breakfast by making pastries. She's making Cuban pastries. The chef or baker there is making English pastries and she learns how to kind of like fuse the two and love both cultures and things like that. There's also a really nice and sweet love story with a guy who like treats her really well. I love reading a good enemies to lover story but we do have to be careful and remember that sometimes people's behaviors in a book are behaviors in a book and they should not be copied in real life. If in real life we should obviously treat everyone with respect, be nice to them and be good partners, good friends, good family members, everything like that. Basically what I'm trying to say is just because you read a book and you see a behavior, it does not mean that you should copy it in real life. You know, this is a person in a book, this is the way that they're behaving. And sometimes that happens so that we can learn from it. Like you can read certain books and be like, for example, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I love that book, but it's not a romance. You read that book and you go, okay, this is, I should look out for that. Those are red flags. Now I know for my life, this is how you should behave. This is how you shouldn't. So this one is a really great example, I think, of how to behave, um, how to treat somebody in a relationship, how to treat a friend. Um, yeah, I love reading about the friend group, love reading about the romance, love reading about the fusion of cultures, about her healing from her grief and all the hard things that she's been through. Just fantastic and I want to read it again. And her new book just came out. It's called When We Were Them. It's actually right there and I'm really excited. I hope I get to read it in 2022. The next book that I readed and completed this... Readed. <laughs> The next book that I read and completed this year is One of Us is Lying by Carrie M. McManus. This is now a TV show. I have yet to watch it, but I am excited too. This one is basically about these four high schoolers who are accused of... What was what were they accused of? I don't know, something. I think different things. And then they were thrown in detention. And then this guy was also in detention with them and they don't really like him because he's kind of like the gossip columnist of the school. And then he dies in the room while they're there. And now they're all accused of murdering him and people are trying to find out who done it and it's in the perspective of all four of the characters which is really interesting i believe there's also a sequel i've yet to pick it up but yeah i don't read a lot of murder mysteries so it was definitely um exciting to jump into this one and i definitely do want to see what happens next and watch the tv show so that is that I cannot currently find my copy of the next book I read and completed in 2021, but it's, I wrote it down a little paper so I would remember. Hoot, 
by Carl Hayasin. I first read this when I was in fifth grade. Oh my gosh, it was one of my favorite books. I loved it so much. I love the movie. It had Logan Lerman, Cody Lindley, and Brie Larson in it. I loved it. I loved the book, everything. And with those elementary schoolers I mentioned earlier, I decided that I would read it with them and a lot of them really did enjoy it. Um, fantastic. It's The language is quite sophisticated. Um, I did not remember that. There's a ton of vocabulary that you can learn from it. So if you are by chance looking for a middle grade novel for someone and want to help them up their vocabulary, this is really a great option. It's basically about a boy who moves to a new town and kind of runs into some trouble all the time. Like there's this guy who's always bullying him. Then he like meets this mysterious guy who's like running around town without shoes on and he won't go to school. And then this other girl who's kind of sort of almost bullying him too. So he just like finds all these like like an eclectic sort of group in a way then it turns out that the barefoot guy is trying to save a bunch of owls that are burrowed in the ground on a construction site um and this big sort of like corporation kind of like ihop i guess um pancake house wants to come and you know construct like build like a building on the site but it would hurt the owls obviously and kill them so the protagonist and his friends try to like save the day uh there's a lot of great commentary in here about big corporations, endangered animals, doing what we can to help out, standing up um, even when people tell you not to. Also the lesson that you're never too young to make a change and stand up and believe in what you believe. A lot of really fantastic messages. I love this story. I genuinely think that like people of any age would enjoy this story. Like it doesn't matter that it's usually read by elementary schoolers, middle schoolers, like it is a fantastic book. So that's Hoot by Carl Hyacin. The next book my friend is currently borrowing and it's People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I was so excited for this one because Beach Read was one of my favorite reads of last year. It was one of those books where I just didn't want to put it down. Oh, love that one so much. Stayed up reading it for hours. And so when People We Meet on Vacation was announced, I was so excited, pre-ordered everything and then it came and I really liked it. I really loved it. I love best friends to lovers stories. So that was really exciting, especially stories about, the word is not endangered. What's the word? I'm still thinking about who, estranged best friends. So it's basically about two best friends that haven't really talked in the last two years. They used to go on a vacation together every single year because she is a travel writer um, and he would come with and they would go to all these cool different places. But then something happened. I think he got a girlfriend and then, you know, it got awkward and whatever. Um, but now she's going on another trip and she really wants him to come with. So she convinces him to come and like the rekindling their friendship and maybe something more. Um, such fantastic ban banter. Literally from page one, I was hooked. I was like, I love this. This is so much fun to read about what's going on. I love these characters. They couldn't be more different from each other. They jumped off the page and came to life. I love funny female protagonists. Really perfectly flawed, I will say too. Like this, the characters felt so real. Uh, and one of the reasons is because they were flawed. There were things about them that they needed to work on, faults that they had to admit to, things they needed to change, and like that is what a human being is. And so I think that's why a lot of people really like the book, whether they realize it or not, is because these are like real life people with real problems and real real faults and things like that and misbeliefs and whatnot. So really enjoyed that one. And I'm so excited for her next book, Book Lovers. I've heard it's fantastic. And I know Colleen Hoover can't stop reading it. So that means it has to be good. The next book I borrowed from a friend and I believe it's the same friend who's borrowing people who meet on vacation. And that's The Trouble With Hating You by Sajni Patel. I've talked about this on my channel several times. I love it. It's a new adult novel as well, just like People We Meet on Vacation is. And The Trouble With Hating You is about a young woman whose father wants to set her up with this guy. And rather than stay through the dinner and meet him and his, I think, and his mom, she escapes. But then she knocks into him outside on the ground, like very awkward. And then she runs away. Turns out her engineering company is going under. He's been brought in to save the day. She doesn't want anything to do with him. He wants everything to do with her. He stays with her like late in the night, helps her out, get, buys her dinner, things like that. And she starts opening up to him. He starts opening up to her. Well, he's always been more open, but like they've both been through like really hard things in their lives, like tr tr trigger warning for several, trigger warning for abuse and for grief. I just really love the way that like she like learns to trust him. That's a really big thing in the story, learning to trust him and like with good reason, like he shows her and not only tells her that she can, which I think is really healthy. So I feel like there are things in this book also that kind of show what a healthy relationship may be like. Um, I just really loved it. And of course the banter was, chef's kiss fantastic the banter was there sharp witty quick like she honestly could be a good playwright like i feel like sajna patel could really shine in writing dialogue for plays because it was quick snappy quick snappy quick 
fantastic. Um, the companion novel, which is about her best friend, I think it's a second chance romance story. Um, that one came out recently and I'm excited to borrow it for my friend and read it, so yay. The next book I read and completed in 2021 is Henry Huggins, which is the first in the Henry Huggins series by Beverly Cleary. This is a middle grade novel and I read this when I was a child as well and then read it again with um, some other elementary school boys that I work with. Um, we all really enjoyed reading it. It's broken up into six chapters and they're all basically like short stories. Um, and it's about this young boy who gets a dog. He like finds him and his parents let him keep them and his name's Ribsy. And then they go on all these adventures together and Henry always finds himself in these like really sticky situations. And then like, it's fun to read about how he gets himself out. <laughs> This book is still very entertaining, even so many decades later. So yeah, it was very nostalgic for me to read this one. Um, she's the same author as like the Ramona books, Beezus, things like that. So yeah, that was another great middle grade novel that I reread this year. The next one is so fantastic, so I must talk about it. And that's Twilight, the graphic novel volume one by Stephanie Meyer, obviously, but the illustrations were by Young Kim and the illustrations were also mwah, chef's kiss fantastic, so good. More fantastic than the Italian food that Esme and Carlyle make in the first film, if you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, this was volume one of the first book. So it was only part of the first book and the Twilight Saga in there. Um, I think most people know what this book's about, but if you don't know what it's about, I have a very lengthy description actually in my five star reads video, which I can leave in the comments, I mean, in the description down below. But yeah, I just really love the artwork. I love seeing one of my favorite stories come to life in a new way that I hadn't explored before. I genuinely love Twilight. I love Paranormal Romance. That book is the blueprint for so many others, in my opinion, and it kickstarted so many people's love of reading. So I think no matter what, like we do need to give Twilight credit for that, whether you like it or not. But I, I personally like really love it. So that was really fun to read and I would love to read volume two at some point. The next book here, if you've been on this channel for at least several months, you'll know that I was eyeing this book so much and then I got it and I just like loved it so much. And that's, excuse me while I ugly cry by Joya Goffney. This is a debut novel as well. It's about a girl who writes everything down in this journal, her fears, her hopes, her dreams, her wishes, everything that she's too afraid to admit out loud. Um, and then she basically has a group project with I think her best guy friend and then this guy and they kind of like don't get along super well i wouldn't say it's like a straight up enemies to lovers but like they don't always like really get along um they don't understand each other in every single way um she grew up they're both black but she grew up a lot more privileged than he did and so that causes some not like strife but like more like real conversation between the two and they learn from each other throughout the story which i really enjoyed anyway her journal goes missing she thinks he did it and then he's trying to prove he didn't so he helps her find out who actually did um of course this is a story about conquering facing your fears doing the thing anyway and you know realizing that you're actually gonna love it and uh <sighs> I really like this one. This was a lot of fun to read. Um, there's also a storyline with her grandmother who suffers from dementia or Alzheimer's. So if that is a trigger warning for you in any way, then you have been trigger warned. Um, but I really like the story. I really enjoyed it. The next book that I read and completed this year is another debut. I'm really happy because I read so many debut novels this year. And that's Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey. This is about a girl who works at her... I think her aunt raises her because her mom's kind of MIA. Um, yeah, her aunt owns this independent bookstore and this girl run, like helps her with it and eventually wants to run it. After college, she's a senior in high school at the moment about to finish up the year. And then a chain bookstore opens up across the street and she basically starts up a feud with one of the sons of the family that bought the chain bookstore. And so the two of them begin to compete with each other. Like they make competing signs outside the window, things like that course it's a romance. I'd say one of my favorite things in the story honestly is just that it's about somebody who's so passionate about reading and loves to read like it's just a fun thing to read about people who love to read people who love to write um and I love this cover so that was Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey. Okay friends I have yet another debut for you. I love this one so much and a lot of people loved it and with good reason. It's Counting Down With You by Tashi Buyan. I want her next book to come out already. It's called A Show For Two but I don't think it comes out until May. Boo. Anyway this is <laughs> about a girl who is a senior in high school, junior, senior, not sure. And she is Bangladeshi and she has a younger brother and her parents, she feels like her parents kind of like take to her younger brother more and like hype him up a lot, but always criticize her. Um, she really wants to be an English major and I think a writer, um, but she's 
scared to tell her parents because she knows what they'll say or maybe she's tried before and they've been angry about it i can't remember anyway she gets lucky when the the two of them go out of town for four weeks to bangladesh to visit family etc and then her dadu who's her grandma she lives in another state comes to stay with her and her brother so now she kind of has a little bit more freedom and she starts tutoring the bad boy of the school who obviously has many layers to him she's like not very excited to tutor him at first. Like she's kind of apprehensive towards him. She doesn't really want to help out, but she told her English teacher she would because she and her English teacher are very close. I will say one of the top things about the story, there are many things I loved, but the banter was fantastic. The banter in this, you guys, the banter is like, you know how I said earlier, the trouble with hating you has great banter. So does this. So much fun to read about. The characters truly jump off the page. There were a lot of fantastic messages in the story that I really enjoyed. You could really feel the pain that the protagonist was going through. She also suffers from a lot of anxiety, but she tries her best through like meditation and prayer and just really enjoyed this so much. So give it a read if you haven't, and I cannot wait for Tashi's second book, A Show for Two. The next book that I read and completed this year was sort of another reread. It was Sideways Stories from Wayside School, also by Louis Sakhar, Sakhar, not sure. Same author as Holes. This book was read to me by my school librarian when I was very young, um, and I decided to read it with some of my students, and it was just a really fun time. I did not remember how wacky it was. Like, it's basically a story about a school. It was supposed to have like 30 rooms but instead they made it like 30 stories and one classroom per story and then the 19th floor doesn't exist it's just very wacky basically is what i'm trying to say and each chapter is told from someone else's point of view so like the teacher the gym teacher the other teacher this student that student um very weird very wacky like you literally read this and you're like how does he come up with this stuff the next book that i read and completed this year was instructions for dancing by nicola yoon this is her third novel and i've read them all this is a young adult novel just like her other ones and this one is about a girl Girl who this one actually has a little bit of magical realism in it this girl basically meets this woman on the street and the woman like says something to her about love i'm not really sure what it is um but then suddenly the protagonist realizes that when she sees pe two people kiss she can like see their future and see like if the relationship's gonna you know go on forever if they're gonna break up and she keeps seeing breakups and she's so doubting doubtful about love also because her parents like split up so there's a lot of stuff she's like not really sure she believes in love then she basically finds herself at this dance studio and these people the people that own it are like could you please um be in this dance competition with our grandson and so she decides to just do the thing because she feels like it was a sign from that woman I loved reading about all the different dances that they do the way that they fall in love it was just a ton of fun to read about the book was very surprising in a way as well i will not say why um but that's that, yeah, I read Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. The next book, I am very happy that I read because the author is Jewish and I love supporting fellow Jewish authors. I would really love to read more stories in the coming year from more Jewish authors. That is a big goal of mine. So this is The Last Words We Said by Leah Shire, a debut novel, young adult. It's about a girl who keeps seeing what you assume basically is the ghost of her like dead boyfriend. And this is the way she's dealing with the grief. Like she can always, she can see him and hear him and stuff, but others can't. And everybody wants her to like stop talking to him things like that and she tries to keep it a secret she goes to therapy you know it's causing strife between her and her family um with her friends too and it's really just a, it's a story about dealing with grief and friendship and loss and so many other things i mean the way that leia writes is so beautiful lyrical poetic like if that's what you're looking for like a very beautifully written story like i would definitely pick this one up just be prepared because like it is an emotional story really fantastically written the way that she just incorporates the whole is it a ghost is it not sort of situation really fantastic um very well written and i'm excited to read more from her also i just realized that this may not actually be be a debut but maybe just the first i've read from her i'm not positive and i really apologize about that the next book that I read and completed in 2021 was The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. As many of you know, this was initially self-published, went viral, and now it's getting traditionally published. Um, this one was so much fun. This is a new adult novel about a girl, well, young woman, who really needs a date to her sister's wedding in Spain. Um, and the only person who she can find to do it and who's willing to do it is this guy at her office that she despises because he was really rude to her when he first came to work there. Um, so basically throughout the book, he's trying to like convince her to, that he should be her date. And she's like, no so it's a really fun enemy to lovers story this one also has a lot of wonderful banter i will say to keep in mind that the whole story does not take place in spain so if you're looking for a, like a tr more travel abroad kind of romance this is not it there is a chunk of it that takes place in spain but there's also a big chunk that takes place 
I'm forgetting where they live, maybe New York City. Um, but yeah, really fun, really romantic. I will say, if you're not into reading Spice, like me, you're gonna be skipping most of the last 100 pages. But besides for that, it was fun. And besides for the last 100 pages, very much a slow burn. The next book I read, seriously one of my favorite books of the year. So fantastic, I wanna reread it. And that's Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. Lynn Painter also just seems like such a sweetheart. I love looking at her Instagram account and she just seems so nice and kind and appreciative of when people hype her book up. Like I made a post about her book and she seemed so happy and so grateful, so. We love Lynn. This one is, oh my gosh, so good. It's really like a true rom-com. You can tell it really pays homage to classic iconic rom-coms like, you know, 10 Things I Hate About You, which is one of my favorites. Um, at the beginning of each chapter, there's a quote from a rom-com, which I think is really clever. This is basically a story about a girl who, when she was younger, she and a bunch of kids on her street were all best friends. They used to hang out together all the time. But as they got older, she and one girl stayed besties. Another guy moved away. And then another guy she's like not getting along with. So the guy who moved away comes back to town. She wants to go out with him. She tries to convince the guy she doesn't get along with to help her out. And he's like, fine, I'll help you out if you give me this like parking spot that like we both are always fighting for. And she's like, sure, whatever. Like, I just want to be in love. Obviously things don't go the way she planned. She's also dealing with her mom passed like many years ago. Obviously she's still having a tough time with it. And now her stepmom wants to do all the things with her that she wanted to do with her mom, like prom dress shopping and things like that. So there's also a more like emotional aspect to this story you could say um yeah really love this one so much so much fun this does have a bit of slapstick comedy in it meaning like more physical comedy like you know someone throwing up on someone someone getting hit in the face and things like that which i think doesn't always work in stories but in this story it worked so very well it really made it feel like a true rom-com like those iconic rom-coms from i mean they just don't make them like that anymore i do love some modern rom-coms but the ones from <sighs> so good Anyway, better than the movies, Lynn Painter. This is a debut novel as well. I don't remember if I mentioned that. The next, so beautifully written, and that's Homegoing by Toni Ann Johnson. She is so talented and incredible. She won the Accents Publishing inaugural novella contest. Um, this was so, so great. This is about a woman who is dealing with a lot of hardship in her life, truly. Like, she's very scarred from all the racism she endured when she was younger. She's having a really tough time with the person that she's with, who's leaving her, other really difficult things. Not a great relationship with her mom, who's a bit of a narcissist. Um, and this story basically is is kind of like a slice of life story, but you also really see her change throughout the story, um, communicating with the different people in her life and the way that they've influenced her. And it was really amazing to see the way she changes. And one of my very favorite things about the story is Tony Ann's writing. It is so poetic, lyric, beautiful, also snappy at times. I really feel like she carefully picks every single word that she uses and beautifully crafted, but it doesn't feel like she tried too hard and like, pulled out some list of words like it, it's like it literally just comes from her mind like the correct words to use in the right order she's just such a fantastic writer and i seriously recommend this novella it was so good the next book here was so much fun to read and that's once upon a quinceanera by monica gomez hira this was a debut as well which is so exciting i know it says it's talking about a quince and there's even 15 written on it the girl is not 15 she's actually Mm, not exactly high school graduate, but it's a summer after high school and she basically needs to get her diploma, which she can't do unless she completes an internship. So she gets an internship basically being a party princess. You know, she dresses up as Belle. It has Beauty and the Beast references, which like I said, I love. She dresses up as Belle. She does it with her best friend and they perform at birthday parties and things like that. Then it turns out she has to perform at her cousin's quince and the two of them don't get along. Um, one of the reasons being that her cousin's aunt was supposed to pay for the protagonist's quince a couple years back and then canceled it because of this scandalous situation. So there's just a lot of like strife with the families and this girl does not want to perform at her cousin's quince, made even worse by the fact that this person that she used to really like a couple of years back, kind of her ex, comes back to town and is playing the beast to her beauty. So a lot of drama, really good. This has been compared to Jane the Virgin and I can see why it has that like telenovela vibe. I will say that it still really stands out on its own. Um, really fantastic, really good. And it takes place in Miami in the Cuban area, which I believe is called Little Havana. And it was really just so much fun to read about. I just really love reading about Cuban culture. As you know, I love a Cuban's girl guide. Um, and I loved the American version of the baker and the beauty. Uh, anyway, really enjoy this one. Really fantastic. So funny, so fun. And a lot of really great messages at the end too. I love the epiphanies that the main character has. Um, I think they're really inspiring and a lot of readers can learn from her. The next book I read earlier in the year, but for some reason it got like mixed up in my pile or something. And that's Radha and Jai's Recipe for Romance by Nisha Sharma. Um, if you watched 
items. In some of my previous Barnes & Noble vlogs, I remember mentioning this and picking it up on a whim because it sounded really good. I love picking books up on a whim. And this is about a girl who is one of the best, I think it's pronounced Kathak. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but she's one of the best Kathak dancers I think in the world. And then she quits because it's just really connected to her mom and her mom basically, she feels like she wants, her mom wants her to like live out her dreams for her that she had for herself when she was younger. And there's just a lot of, strife there between the two you could say so they move away to another state and her mom's like fine we're moving but you still have to go to a performing arts school and the protagonist doesn't want to dance at the showcase for the school for when she graduates so she sees if she can join like a dance team or be a choreographer or something different so she doesn't actually have to dance there is a great love story in here too she also gets a lot closer to her dad who doesn't live with her he's a very renowned chef and he teaches her how to make a lot of the recipes of their culture which was a lot of fun to read about and i love to see her connect with her culture in that way and reading about the dancing was so much fun and of course the romance and her, her and her mom's relationship developing throughout the story as well was um, really great to read about. And also look, let's just look at this cover for a second. I love it. Okay, so if you watched my last video, you'll know that there are a lot of books I'm in the middle of right now. Um, the only one that I completed from that list so far was Chasing Lucky. I do have about two days left to finish reading Kisses and Croissants by Anna Sophia Jono, which I really think that I can, um, but I'm just not going to say in this video that I completed it because I haven't yet and I don't want to lie. So the last book that I really truly like read and completed this year is Chasing Lucky by Jen Bennett. That's my second Jen Bennett book of the year and my third of all time so far that I've read. This is a best friend to lover story. It's about a girl who I think she's like it's the story starts at the end of junior year of high school, so it's young adult. She and her mom lived in this specific New England town for about 12 years, and then they moved away. They've been on the run for like five years, and now they're back. So she and her best friend have like reunited, and she's like really fun to read about. She and her mom have this sort of interesting relationship, which I like reading about as well. Um, I love reading about those small town vibes. This is a good example of a best friends to lovers story. So if that's what you're looking for, maybe pick this one up. I did mention it in my romance recommendations video that I posted pretty recently so i'll leave that in the description as well if you're interested in hearing more about this and about other recommendations that i have okay so now that we have talked about all these books that i read this year and how much i love them and all the great things that were in all of them first of all i just want to say that i'm so grateful that i was able to read all these books and read so many stories read from debut authors jewish authors all these different diverse authors i mean it was just really incredible and i'm so happy about it different genres as well um with that being said i want to say thank you all so much for your support on this channel whether you started watching yesterday seven months ago seven years ago whatever it may be thank you so much i really appreciate and love every single one of you and with that i would like to give back i am doing a giveaway to celebrate all of you and to celebrate surpassing four thousand subscribers on this channel i feel so lucky and blessed i want to thank you guys i want to thank god my family everyone who supported me so far okay first of all what the giveaway prize is the giveaway prize is choosing one book of your choice which i will gift to you through amazon because i believe that's just the easiest way to do it and so you'll tell me whatever book it is you want. It just needs to be under $20. Now for the rules of the giveaway. One, subscribe to the channel and like the video. Two, follow me on a social media platform. That could be Twitter or Instagram. And three, leave a comment letting me know you subscribed, which platform you followed me on along with your username. And in that comment, also let me know one book this year that you really love to read. I know it's hard to narrow it down, but just pick one, a recommendation. Other people can go through the comments and read what you guys have read. And we can all like give each other recs and help each other out. So again, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Two, follow me on a social media platform, either Twitter or Instagram. Three, leave a comment letting me know that you did all those things and a book that you really enjoyed this year. As always, I'm also going to leave my Goodreads down below. You don't have to add me on there. You're welcome to if you want to, no pressure. I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much for all of your support. I love you and yeah, more videos to come. Bye.